all stop enjoying making art at one point or another. It happens to most people and most people get over that hump and find a way on the other side better and more passionate than ever. But some people get stuck and they get stuck for a while and other people never make it over the hump at all. I'm going to talk about three separate times this has happened to me and what I did to get over it. I never know what to do with my hands so I'm going to be drawing Negan from The Walking Dead at the same time. Stick around till the end if you enjoy baseball bat wielding psychopaths. I mean, who doesn't? I've always wanted to be an artist, but I never really thought that that path was available to me. I don't know if it's because I'm British or what. We have quite a cynical outlook on life, especially compared to Americans. And that might be why I decided to start studying art seriously quite late in life compared to others. But when I did decide to start studying, I turned to Proko. For the first six months, he was pretty much all I watched on YouTube and I practiced studying anatomy pretty much every day. And after a few months of doing this, I felt I was ready to draw my own stuff instead of studying all the time. I thought the studies looked pretty good and I was starting to feel really confident. And so I started drawing. But I wasn't expecting the drawings to look so... shit. I was really confused. I'd put all these hours into studying and yet my drawings looked like a dropped trifle. I didn't understand, but I put these thoughts to the back of my mind and I carried on. And it was around this time that I joined the Q-Brush forums. Mark Brunet had sectioned out his forums into Bronze, Silver and Gold League depending on your skill level. I was in the Bronze League, but I didn't think I'd be there for very long. I had studied for months after all. That's f***ing loads of time. So I uploaded a few pieces for Mark to critique, expecting him to pat me on the head and tell me I was a good boy. Well, that didn't happen. <laughs> he told me what I didn't want to hear, but I needed to. He essentially told me that I needed to study. Study what, I asked. Everything. I was pretty devastated by this. I was used to school friends and parents telling me that I was good at drawing. And now I've got a guy telling me that I'm nowhere near as good as I think I am. So I ran back to the warm bosom of Proko and started studying even harder. But I realized I wasn't really having fun with it. It felt like school. I'd bought his courses online and I was trying to follow them, but I was struggling. And to be honest, I got bored. Drawing was supposed to be fun. I wanted to draw Batman punching the Joker in the penis, not learn about the brachioradialis. The problem that was staring me in the face that I hadn't realized was that my expectation was far beyond my actual skill level. I was able to conjure up these images in my mind, but I wasn't able to replicate them. Not only that, but I was unable to recognize where I was going wrong, which is why Mark's critique came out of nowhere for me. So I started to expand my horizons a little bit and look at other sources of material. I would listen to podcasts like the Three Point Perspective podcast and Proko's Draftsman podcast with Marshall Vandruff and began to realize where I was going wrong. Basically what I'd done was I skipped a step in my learning and so I kind of set myself up to fail. I had no idea how to draw shapes in three dimensions and I didn't really understand perspective. Both of these skills would have helped me understand anatomy better and I may have avoided a painful year of having my expectations crushed by reality. So I humbled myself and went back to the basics. I do exercises and draw fun stuff at the same time. The main difference now is that I wasn't expecting my drawings to be good and I found myself being less frustrated by my output. I have a really bad relationship with social media. <laughs> I hate to admit that. I'd love to say that I don't care about what people think, that I don't care about likes, followers, shares and subscribers, but I do, I really do. And I didn't realize how much it was impacting me as an artist until last year. I would look at other artists and I'd peer at their numbers. They'd have thousands of followers and loads of really positive interactions online. And most of it I could understand because they were really good artists. But there were some artists that I thought that I was better than. And yet they had these huge followings, way bigger than me. And I didn't understand it and it didn't seem fair. So I googled how to grow a following on Instagram and I read the same articles that I'm sure most people have read because they basically all say the same things. Post anywhere between one and 200 things per day, use these particular hashtags, post at this particular time, post these particular posts. I tried it all. I thought I should create art that the algorithm would like and so I started coming up with these plans. I thought I would draw nothing but footballers so that football fans would follow me and maybe buy some prints, but that didn't work. So I thought I'd draw some animals so then people who like animals would follow me and maybe buy some prints, but that didn't work. 
Then I thought that I could do mini comics that people would find funny and charming and that didn't work. It felt like no matter what I was trying, nothing was sticking. And I was the common denominator in all of this, so it must be me. I felt helpless and I became pretty miserable. The truth is I was trying to grow social media in any way that I could think of. I didn't have either the patience or the discipline to give it time to grow. I'd create a plan that was ill thought out and I'd try it out for a few weeks. I'd noticed that I wasn't getting any interactions and then changed the plan altogether. I, once again, was setting myself up to fail. I started writing on Substack late last year as a way of getting my thoughts out as a struggling artist. It was while I was writing that I started to realize that my relationship with social media had become really toxic. And I realized I had to change something. And that change came in the form of getting off social media entirely. I was off for over six months and I started to feel good again about myself and my art. I made a deal with myself that I wouldn't post anything on social media if I ever expected anything in return. I also wouldn't post anything unless it was something I actively wanted to share. Which is why I probably won't post anything until my comic is ready. No matter how much I might dislike this side of me, I clearly have a tendency to want to be noticed, loved and validated by strangers online. I think most of us do in various degrees. I mean, that's what social media is for, isn't it? But now I can safely say I no longer compare myself to others, whether it's on Instagram, YouTube or real life. If people are doing well, then that's great. It makes no difference to what I'm doing and that change in mindset has helped improve my mental health dramatically. Whenever I'm daydreaming, which is often, I sometimes imagine the future. I'll create imaginary scenes and just live that life for a little while. For example, I imagine taking my comic to conventions and interacting with people who were fans of it. I'd be really confident and my work will be worthy of people's time, money and attention. But whenever an opportunity comes up in reality, all of that confidence goes away. I've mentioned in a previous video that I was going to be doing a graphic facilitation job. It's the first gig that I've had as an artist in real life and I almost said no out of fear. I figured that I wasn't good enough or that I'd embarrass the people that I was with when they figured out that I didn't actually have any skills. <laughs> and I've been encouraged by people to give teaching a go too. Just a small course, nothing massive, but even that scared the absolute shit out of me. When I'm in my own environment and I've got time to think and more importantly edit myself, then I think I could do a good job. It's why I'm okay with doing YouTube videos. If this was unedited, it would be awful. I can edit out all the times that I've screwed up speaking or lost my train of thought, but you can't do that in real life. And I'd go back to that image in my mind where people are pointing and laughing and telling me that I'm not good enough and that I'm a fraud. The fear of failure, fear of rejection is powerful and it can be debilitating. But there have been two things that have really helped me recently. The first one is my age and the second one is my operation. If I were in my early 20s again, I'd allow opportunities to pass me by out of fear, thinking that I would gain confidence later on. I was effectively kicking the can down the road. And I'd do that because I've got plenty of time. I'm in my 20s, got all the time in the world. But now that I'm in my 30s, I don't feel that I've got that same luxury anymore. And because of my heart operation, that feeling is just compounded. So now if I have that feeling of fear that stops me from doing something, then I'll try to push that fear all the way down, shut that voice up and just say yes. It doesn't always work and sometimes the fear can be too overwhelming and I allow it to win. But I'm a lot better than I was. Now not everyone is in the same personal situation as me, but this is something that has helped me get over that fear factor. I realise that if I feel that I don't have a choice or I don't have time to talk myself out of something, then I'll feel better about saying yes to things. So now if the only reason that I'm saying no to something is because I'm scared, then I'll try and ignore that impulse and say yes as quickly as possible. I'm not saying that will work for everyone, but sometimes you need a little push. And if you wait for someone else to push you, you could be waiting forever. So be kind to yourself. One of the things that I've learned is that nobody is really going to hand you anything whether you feel that you deserve it or not. The two things that you need to learn is the ability to ask for things and the ability to recognize opportunities that are in front of you and take them. I'm nowhere near the finished article. I have a lot of flaws that I still need to iron out and I'm constantly working on myself as both a person and an artist. But I wish I had someone who had been through this sort of thing before and could point me in the right direction, which is kind of the point of this video. 
it also serves as a reminder to myself that I can and have improved. Even if it's taking longer than I wish it did, it's still progress. I hope that helped someone somewhere. This is the finished drawing of Negan. I think it's fun. And if you enjoyed this video, then you should enjoy the one on screen now. I think it's pretty interesting and I hope you do too. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you soon.